Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. Today we have our review of Dauntless on the Nintendo Switch, a free-to-play action-adventure game heavily influenced from the excellent Monster Hunter series. It's a relief to me to hear that the developers have put in a collective 6,000 hours into that series and are comprised of ex-members of Capcom, Blizzard, and many other large studios. Although it's free, is it worth your time and effort to play? Well, let's find out. In the fantasy world where the game takes place, disastrous events have brought the people to their knees. Huge behemoths roam the land, slaughtering all those they come across. And it's up to you, as one of a group known as the Slayers, not in the Buffy sense, Ooh. to team up into groups of four to go out into the land and to track them down. Although a simplistic premise, I did enjoy the way the story was set up at the beginning of the game, and the production values are quite high, particularly the small hand-drawn cutscenes that blend seamlessly with the three-dimensional introduction, it just worked really nicely. You start out as a brand new Slayer and have to go through a series of tutorial-like sections in the hub area. Now I'll talk about it a little more later, but as you can see, the hub area suffers from some severe frame drops. You control your character from a third person perspective and in the overworld area can communicate and talk to other players via a chat box as well as NPCs to receive quests. Quest lines are generally shown via an exclamation mark above the head of one of these inhabitants and when you complete a mission this then changes to a question mark. Chat dialogues are generally straightforward and when you're given a quest it will show you right here exactly what's required of the player. When Glenn and I initially started out with the game, I'm not going to lie, I was a little worried about how similar this felt to so many other free-to-play titles. Almost like you were being spoon-fed every single detail. Thankfully though, the core gameplay is far from your standard free-to-play title, with no wait times, and the developers making a real effort to reward players for genuine skill. And although there are some cosmetics and temporary boosts that can be purchased, they made it clear from day one that the focus would always always be on your own ability and not the ability of your wallet. As with the aforementioned Monster Hunter series, there are several different weapon types that you can use, from the slower axes and hammers, to the swift jewel blades, and even some pistols and grenades. And every weapon in the game has its own unique combinations and playstyle, and will have their own movesets tied to these. Once you've selected your mission and you know which behemoth you're going out to fight, you'll then need to gear up. It's nice to see that while waiting for a match, you can actually leave that screen and go off and just wander around the hub area and just get yourself ready. Upon entering the fight, this is where the first bit of promising information is presented to you. You're shown the strengths and characteristics of your enemy and the best weapon to use against it, as well as the correct armor. These again can be customized in terms of color, but if you like another piece of armor in terms of its visuals more than your current one, there is an option to transmogrify, I think that's the word, the current piece to have the attributes of another that you own. Not exactly sure how I feel about that though, as it kind of defeats the purpose of the individual looks of those different armors. But I guess it's a quality of life feature that may avoid us all wearing Kutku armor ever again. Once you're all geared up and everyone's readied up, the four of you will, quite literally, as in every Epic Games game it seems, drop into the world. And here things are much more akin to the recently released Monster Hunter World. Each stage will be one large open area with no loading screens at all. And as the four of you set out to track down the behemoth, you'll be using your lantern ability with the L button to release some ether that you can then follow towards them. It's nice having this slight approximation of their location. As you'll see on the top right of the screen, there's a percentage bar that's gradually increasing. And it's really important that you get there before that gets too high, as we'll discuss a bit later on. If you're at all familiar with these types of games, you'll know that the crafting of gear is all important, but to do this, you'll need certain resources. These can be gathered throughout the world and I'm pleased to say you don't need to take any particular tools. You just hold down the B button and mine them as you go. Many of these, like the bushes, can be grabbed as you run past. The movement of the game is very fluid indeed. You'll be vaulting up large cliff faces and leaping off edges with no fall damage to hinder your progress. When one of your party finds the beast, they'll release a flare into the sky which you can see from a far distance. What follows is a cross-country dash to try and help them before they get wiped out. Each enemy has a distinct set of moves which will get progressively more ferocious as they get more agitated. They enter a rage mode which is shown by them turning red and also vary their attack patterns from run to run. And Phoenix Labs took more than a little inspiration 
for some of the designs, including the move patterns of these monsters. But I say that in the best possible way, as each one feels fleshed out with interesting and most importantly challenging sets of skills to overcome. There have already been numerous occasions whereby Glenn and I have been on our last legs getting absolutely destroyed, only to have these failures act as learning experiences, so that when we came again for the same fight, we were always able to triumph. In terms of the controls then, you have your light and heavy attacks, with the heavy draining your stamina, but also a sprint ability and you can jump in combat. Chaining attacks together and then getting out quickly is the order of the day, and depending on your class, there is an evade move to match. The only issue we really experienced in terms of these though, were that they didn't have a lock-on ability, which seems like a strange oversight for a title that streamlines every other aspect of the monster hunting genre. You can refocus the camera by left-clicking the analog stick, but once again, we felt that would have worked better on the right stick. Only minor details and most of the other aspects of the controls, in terms of sensitivities, can be tweaked, but in a title where you're doing the same repetitive actions with your hands, believe you me, you want it just right. Unlike the titles I've spoken about already, the remaining health of your adversary is shown in the top right hand of the screen. You're given a rough indication as to where it's currently at, and this is shown by quarters. If they're able to escape the fight for a brief period, then their health can restore. But also, I mentioned the percentage bar on the right of the screen, and well, yeah, if this gets to 100, oh my goodness. No longer can you revive your teammates, which is possible before this, and if you're down, well, you're down for the count. Each player does have a few self-revives, which can be used in this time, but the music shifts, the enemy takes on a much more menacing tone, and Glenn and I both loved this addition. It made those last stands feel so much more important. And as I lay helplessly dead on the floor watching Glenn's final efforts with the Terminator style music playing in the background, I couldn't help but be impressed that this was a free to play game. The title offers several other avenues for your time including trials, with leaderboards shown in the main area, and all of the content that requires skill is free to play, and that's what I really take away from the experience. Yes, you can go out and spend ridiculous amounts of money making yourself look pretty, but it's gonna make no difference whatsoever when you're stood in front of a giant behemoth. A small side note, you can go into the options and turn off a lot of the sales pitches, which was a nice touch. Overall for me, gameplay scores 18 out of 20. While the controls, they're decent, but there's a few little tweaks I would have liked to have seen. They score 15 out of 20. Visually, the game falls somewhere between Monster Hunter World, Fortnite, and a World of Warcraft title. In the overworld area, the performance is quite horrible, and any internet issues that you have will be reflected by some jittery and laggy gameplay, which is a shame, but it's always the case in an internet-based game. Regardless of that though, the frames can drop below 20 in the hub area, and this was a real concern to both of us, but thankfully when you're in-game fighting a monster, everything's much more smooth. It's still not perfect, and I would expect as the months go on, we'll see a good number of patches to optimise performance, but it's worth noting. As mentioned, the monster design is excellent, and the level of detail on them good. Having the ability to slice off a tail or break tusks, or even stumble the creature with a slice of the legs, feels both satisfying and quite fitting. But my favourite part of the game in terms of the visuals and audio has to be the audio that they've used. The music when you enter a stage can be very different depending on the environment. The timing of a perfect swing in the face of a charging monster is met with a shriek and cry of pain that makes the fight feel so much more realistic. The different weapons all sound nice, particularly a grenade throw as it explodes against your enemy, or the singing of your blades as they slice through enemy flesh. Armor sets and models are all designed well, and the environments, although a touch repetitive at times, have a good amount of detail with dynamic shadows, some volumetric lighting, as well as some decent reflections on water. After being quite worried that this was just going to be Fortnite with monsters, I was pleasantly surprised by the game, and equally so the visuals. In handheld mode, it does suffer from a touch more blurriness, but again, when you're in a stage fighting a monster, everything runs reasonably well. Now, I would say reasonably well for both handheld and docked, but I can imagine many people get into that hub area seeing those grating 15 to 20 frames per second moments and potentially writing off the rest of the game. And in our opinion, that would be a mistake. Visuals as they stand right now, they need a bit of fixing and a touch of tweaking, but they're still nice and the character and monster designs are excellent. They score 15 out of 20. Whereas the audio is really one of the stars of the show here, but I would have loved to have seen native voice chat at launch, which as far as I looked, I couldn't see. Audio scores 17 out of 20. 
the game's going to set you back no pounds, no euros, or no dollars, which might be a bit of a stretch for some, but I think we can manage it. My biggest concern with any free-to-play game, and I'm not going to lie, I hate the free-to-play model of most titles, was that you would be able to just pay to win. But I can tell you, this is more than worth investing your time into, as all of the bear moth fights come down to your own skill. Plus the fact that the developers intentionally removed loot boxes from the game so they don't exist at all here, and included the option to switch off any promotional advertising within it. That certainly gets my seal of approval, and with none of the time gate nonsense that I'm used to from free to play. There's only one score we can give for value here, and that's 20 out of 20. So there we have it. Dauntless is an excellent, more accessible monster hunter that has a touch less depth than that title, but will be a great time with a group of friends or with randoms online. Even with such a large backlog of games to play, which I know we all have, we would suggest this as one to try out, with very challenging core gameplay and some sensible decisions made by the developers. It just needs a little patch to fix some of the jankier performance in that hub area. Dauntless scores an overall switch up score of 85%. Definitely worth the investment of your time. A big thanks to the patrons who support us every single month and to all of you who have subscribed. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!